Hi, this is Fred Neiman of Hanlon Neiman, a Central New Jersey elder law and estate planning firm, practicing health care directive and living will law in all 21 counties of the state of New Jersey. You need a living will and you need a health care directive. And I've had recent cases in the office which really confirms the importance of those documents. If you were to have a sudden stroke, if you were to be in a horrific car accident, would you or would you not want to be kept alive regardless of what the prognosis of the doctor was? Do you feel that life is so important to you that no matter what condition you're in, you should be kept alive? Or do you believe there comes a point in your quality of life that the burden of living greatly exceeds the benefits of living and would no longer want to be kept alive? That's why health care directives are so important. In the absence of a health care directive, you're at risk to being kept alive even if you would have chosen not to. But with the health care directive, you can define under what circumstances you should or should not be kept alive. And let me tell you, it does matter. I've had recent uh, cases in the office where individuals have either not had living wills or have signed living wills which were contrary to what the family expected. In each case, they were bound by the choices made by the individual and the doctors and the hospitals were technically required to abide by them. Your health care directive and your living will should also give access to family members, physicians, and interested parties the right to receive your medical records and to communicate with your health care representatives. Did you know you're not allowed to obtain the medical information concerning your spouse or your parents or your adult children in the absence of a health care directive with, with a medical release form? To not have that in today's day age does yourself a great disservice because what it can result in is unnecessary litigation in case the family members have conflicting opinions on what should be done. Your living will is uh, subject to your verbal instructions, meaning if under these uh, circumstances you get a bad prognosis but you choose to live whereas your health care directive says you would prefer not to live, you override that written document as long as you're able to articulate your feelings. It's only when you're incapacitated, comatose, for example, a coma, and you're not able to communicate your wishes that the health care directive uh, takes effect. You can also specify in your health care directive whether you wish to be an owner, uh, uh, organ donor or what death standard you would prefer. Many of my clients choose the brain death standard, others prefer the whole breath standard, in other words, the hua standard, which is essentially life is defined by breathing and heartbeat, not by brain activity. So I hope I've convinced you of the necessity of having a healthcare directive in the same breath. You should also have a power of attorney. I ha have one, I've had one for decades. Uh, my parents have them, even your adult children should have them. So if you do not have these documents in place, give us a call. It will be our, our pleasure to assist you in having that finalized.